Okay, we are live on both platforms. Uh, hello, Samir, how are you today? <laughs> hey, hey, I'm good, I'm good. All right, everybody, um, let me please know in the comments, either on Facebook or here in Zoom, if you hear me, just uh, write something, yes, uh, send, send a thumbs up. I want to try the strategy Samir was, uh, was telling us about to boost <laughs> engagement. <laughs> so please make sure that you go let us know if you hear us uh, in the chat. Hello, Kiran, hello, Phil. Nice to see you. Uh, and uh, we are here for the third time, right, today? Yeah, third yeah, time. Third time, and this is the th uh, third part of our seven-part uh, webinar series, which is called Social Media Bootcamp, uh, where we cover all the strategies on how to boost your social media strategy, how to boost your social media presence of your business or your personal brand. Yesterday, uh, we were talking about uh, how to get the initial traction uh, with, uh, with uh, using friends and family. So if you miss the webinar, there is a replay available on Facebook, so you can check it and I will be uploading it on YouTube uh, as, as well. And there will be a webinar available of this, uh, of this part too. So guys, if you have any questions whatsoever about uh, the topic we will cover today, um, make sure you will ask us down in the comments uh, on Zoom or on the Facebook and we'll be answering them all. And today we're talking about really amazing topic and today we are talking about how to build the communities how to build the communities around your brand uh samir before we start uh tell me why do you think that community is the uh, best uh one of the best strategies that brand can uh deploy in 2019 uh, you know community building is the life of a company and it actually makes alpha audience you know when you have a community it's basically and they start liking you and loving you, it actually creates alpha audience. And alpha audience is an audience that actually loves talking about you, loves sharing your content, loves you know, telling other people about you. They're like your brand ambassadors. Okay? Mm. So, and you know, if you're in a competitive space and if you have that alpha audience already up there work, you know, promoting you, nothing can beat you, nothing can stop you from mm -hmm. doing it. Right? So that is the core of the company to have that alpha audience, that community that promotes you and always, you know, believes in whatever you say. That's exciting. Like, That's exciting. And I, I mean, exactly, greatest, greatest example is Apple, you know, like Apple, whenever they launch the craziest phone, you always have that alpha audience that just wants to buy it. You know, even if Samsung does better or someone does better. Yeah. I mean, last keynote was watched by one and a half million people live. It's great. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's exactly. amazing. Yeah. Um, all right, uh, Samir. I think you can start screen sharing uh, for those of you who are joining on Facebook. We are talking about how to build the communities, uh, not only on Facebook but on other social media platforms as well. Uh, so make sure you stick around, ask questions if you if you want to know more about it, um, because it's going to be some golden nuggets as usual. <laughs> awesome. So diving deeper, uh, today's topic, uh, the new social media in 2019 community building. Now, why do we need, like you started, why do we need a community, right? What are the benefits are, of having a community? The first thing is you become more discoverable. You know, people, when they find you and they see that you have a community and they enter in that community, they just see that other people sharing content. They just have that first credible effect that this company can be trusted because other people are trusting this company, okay? Uh, and there's a lot of conversions happening in a community that could help you, that could help other people around. So there's a chance of that. Third biggest you know, benefit is that you get a lot of recruitment opportunities. You know, when companies want to hire somebody, they actually build a community, and this, whenever they offer a job you know, opportunity, they themselves refer other people. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people, we hire are basically people who are referred by someone else. Mm -hmm. you, know? Uh, you know, there were days where you used to, you know, give agencies money to hire somebody. Now you just run, the, if you have a community, just post that you have a position open, they will refer people and those will be really good people they refer, you know. So there's a lot of you know, recruitment opportunities. And again, building, it actually builds a very productive community that actually 
listens to you whenever you say you, they give you great feedback and like you have a community at pitch ground right uh people tell about the problems tell about you know feedback you know some someone gets mad you know and then other people actually try to cool him down rather than you cooling them down right exactly. so it's like a family it's like a family in a village that you know nurtures and gets good you know gets better day by day and you know it forms a family which is kind of online family you could say yeah exactly and like the what holds what sticks the community together is some vision some some passion something something uh, that they they are feel that they are part of a movement they are part of something bigger and i think that that's one of the crucial things every community should uh should have to to yeah. have this like uh, direction where we, where they are going exactly exactly so that's why whenever you make a community you need to be very clear first yourself that why am i creating a community why does this community exist what value am i giving to other people it should not be like you create five communities like you know, you know creating is free right you can create a group on facebook and you can call it a community people <laughs> run like 10 communities and they post nothing over there. Right, so you have to be very clear. Like I'm creating a community that will always talk about social media, or will always talk about softwares, you know. And then you have to create content. Uh, now, when you create a community, uh, a lot of people what they do is that they don't document their community building strategy. You know, they just go on the fly. Like you know, they go on the fly. You know what? I feel good today. Let's post about this. You know, tomorrow mm -hmm. I'm going to post about an interview. You know, like every day there's this post content and this. They spray content basically. They're not. They don't have a strategy. They just, they just spray the content. Um, it's not consistent. It's not a very good strategy because it's not consistent. Someday you might be very super busy. Sometimes you know you will have families you know attending you, relatives coming to your home, and you will have nothing to post, and the community will be dead. So whenever somebody creates a community, my advice is that you know create a community that people log into Facebook or Twitter just to see what, are, what new content you have posted in the community. Mm -hmm. That's your inspiration, actually. You know, that I want to log into Facebook so that I can go to PitchGround and see what Jacob has posted. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. is the thing that you want to have ultimate goal. And, um, and if you ask, this is very, if you ask, you know, this, it's a report done by Buffer that said, how many company have, you know, how many companies actually have documented social media strategy? And you could say that 50.9% people said no. Like, it sounds so simple, you know, document your strategy, you know, put everything on calendar, design something, but people still don't do it. You know, there's things so, that you know. Samir, can, can, you, can you elaborate what exactly do you mean by documenting your social media strategy? Yeah. Great. Uh, so an example over here is this one. This is the example of how you can document it, right? Uh, there are like seven days in a week. Okay. This is just an example of a strategy. Like on Monday, you decided, you know what, you want to post, like this is the bird view of the strategy and then it will go more deeper when you, when you go deeper into it. So mm -hmm. let's say the strategy is on Monday, you want to share a motivational quote or a story right? This is your Monday strategy. You know, you need to find content, prepare content before Monday comes for like next two, three weeks. You know, it could be quotation. It could be a story of a founder. It could be a story of your user, right? Uh, members who join your community so that you can promote them. It should be a motivational one. So Monday decided for motivational quotes, right? You'll be posting one or two. Tuesday, you know, you should, it should be a story about a case study, you know, story related to a brand who actually leveraged their social media mm -hmm. by using hacks and tips, right? So that people can learn from those case studies. So when you have this bird you created, people will actually start working, you know, dedicate the job and start creating four or five case studies for one month, you know, like every Tuesday, there should be a case study, mm -hmm. right? And another example on Wednesday, it's a show off day, you know, where you ask your users, you know, what are you working on? What is your greatest project you're working on? You know, what is the thing that inspires you? What are you good at? You know, someone would be good at content writing. They'll be showing off their graphics work. They'll be showing their websites. Just make an open day for everybody to talk and see if they can co-market and collaborate, right? I see. Thursdays you could do interview like you guys do on pitch ground, right? You do founder interviews. There could be one dedicated day to interview founders, or it could be if you can also you know, when you find that they're good users or members in your community, you can actually interview them, give them the you know the spotlight, talk about them, and they will share that content and bring more 
more you know good users to your community so it's like a viral effect right uh, friday you could share some hacks and tips for users to experiment you know assuming that saturday sunday weekend they'll experiment and not party so you know on friday you can actually share some you know experiments for them to do on weekends right Saturday, you can, uh, you know, create a day which is called help day, you know, where people, users actually help each other, you know, like, mm -hmm. like when, on Wednesday, they show the skills, right? On, on Saturday, you can say, let's do free, free, let's give free services to other people and for one hour, half an hour, right? So if somebody's good with content, he will review other people's content, right? And they can book each other's slot. People can book other slot. You know, graphic designers can help, you know, product designers, idea generation, SEO strategy, whatever strategy they have. They can help one hour for to any other member. And on Sunday, you know, you can actually have a day where what happened if somebody helped you, what results did you get? You know, what did you plan? This could be a total community where people are helping each other, sharing results, thanking other people. You know what? I got on call with Jacob. He told me a great strategy, which is video live. I never did that before. You know, I'm going to do it and help me. So, you know, people first trying to help and then the results so that other people know, you know what, this community works, people are helping each other, you know, just let's follow this community. Now, these are just few examples of strategy. There could be millions of strategies, okay? Uh, the point is, this is a bird view of a strategy that's documented, right? The further documentation would be, you know, creating posts and then, you know, putting on content calendar. You know, Monday, this is the post, three posts. Tuesday, these are the posts. We're going to interview one, two, B. You know, we're going to do this. So this is when you document that and you can see in a bird view. Then you have this chance of improving it and chance of, you know, iterating the experiment. You know, this is like an experiment. You do it. Some of some will work. Some will fail. So the ones that fail, you chop it off and add some new idea to it. So, so basically, what, what one thing which connects all these um, different um, different types of content is the interaction and that actually dialogue is is happening there. That it's not only like one um, like direction only from the brand, but the community can interact as well. Uh, it makes sense. And thanks for for clarifying clarifying what you actually mean with documentation. So. Documentation, your community strategy is basically create, creating a plan of what uh, types of posts you want to be posting. Like the very first thing you want to you wanna create when you're building community. Yep, yep. That is the, that is the thing you have to do. When you, uh, when you create content, you need to create a post and you define and filter people. Like, you know, these are the prospects. I have identified these are my top users of the community. Like if you're doing a community on Facebook, you have a Facebook group, you can get from analytics who are your top, you know, people who, mm -hmm. you know, interact in the group, right? And you can actually find something to reward them. You can find something to gift them. You can mention them someday, you know, like these are the guys who are helping us this week, right? Uh, so these are the tactics that you can do. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Thank you. Cool. So uh, next part is that, you know, now if you're, so starting a community requires a lot of time. You, know, you have to invest a lot of time into it. It's not like something you post and disappear. Like you said previously, you have to engage with the audience. It's not like that you generate content and disappear. You just reply once or twice in a day. You have to really get you know, connected with the users. And if it, if it sounds a lot of, or it's, if it sounds like very difficult or very overwhelming, you can start with having a support group, you know, like if you're a company, if you're a brand, if you're an agency, you can have a support group where people, where your task is to support people, you know, for example, social champ, our customers, we have a dedicated a secret closed group where only our paid mm -hmm. users go, you know, like it's hidden, you know, when you become a paid customer, you get into this, into this group. Okay. Right? So you can start ideas with this because in this support group we don't have to generate a lot of content there is no monday tuesday Wednesday, all that strategy it's just that people find issues they have suggestions they have feedback we give them a sneak preview of something that we are going to launch they get to see the design before we actually launch it so it's based on that idea but it can start with the support group and see how your users interact then just go full scale and you know create some strategy like this mm -hmm. have a new 
community or do it in this community, but this is the foolproof idea. Samir, will, yeah. you, give, will you give access to this uh, secret support group, uh, people who will buy LTV? Yes, they will get access to it. <laughs> yeah, they will get access to it. All right, guys, so for those of you who don't know, we are launching Social Champ on uh, September 17th and you will get access to the secret group. So, <laughs> it's another <Awesome>. group. <laughs> it sounds cool, you know, like secret group. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Uh, so now once you have a strategy, right, you need to find users, okay? Uh, there's, a, there's a service from Google called Alerts, right? Google Alerts. Uh, you can find, you can put alerts like uh, your name or maybe a niche like social media marketing, social media tools, uh, cats. I don't know if you have a dog, you know, food, you know, service where you put dog food, right? And whenever somebody talks on internet about it, you get an alert, right? So this actually helps you to monitor and listen where the people are talking about you and what they're talking about. And then mm -hmm. you can actually go into that communication. Like if somebody's talking on Twitter about dog food, right? And you can get a notification and then you can actually go to that place and start communicating, right? Sometimes, you know, it happens when you're on Twitter and you, you just don't like a brand and you just hate tweet that I don't like this and suddenly a brand goes into your DM or just comments that you know what hey try us out you know that is what they're doing they have set some keywords where people talk something negative and they actually join the conversation mm -hmm. and users to themselves right so this is how you can monitor and listen where people are because you want to pre you want to understand the mindset of the users who are into your community Right, so that when you produce content, it is the content that the audience wants to consume. Okay, if you have a social media community, you can try talking about, you know, shoes and leather, but you need to understand if they like leather or shoes or not, right? Mm -hmm. If they want mm -hmm. to the content about it, right? So I, I mean, I mean, in, when you are creating communities, when you are building products, one of the best ways and places to start is. Just by asking your target audience specific questions, for example, what is your biggest challenge with X, right? And leave, leave the question very open, so they, they, will, uh, they will give you like their own answers, not just only yes or no, but they will formulate their, their thoughts in a way that you can actually use in your communication further, right? You will discover all the lingo they are using, all the slang they are using, so you will understand really thoroughly the, uh, your, your target audience. Yeah, that's a very good idea. And pro you can actually do that by, uh, you know, by creating, if you're doing a Facebook group, you can actually ask questions before people join the group, right? Yes. And before they join the group, they can answer that and actually you can have an idea of what users are in your community and what's their motivation and inspiration. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Good stuff. Get. And again, now, once you have, yeah, once you have good, if you understand your audience, you know, what they like, for example, if they like cats, right? You need to produce content, uh, you know, related to cats, right? So now there are two ways to have content. One is to produce your content. Other is to curate your content, right? If you produce your content, it takes, it's time consuming, but you cannot create five, six content in a single day. Other ways to create content. So you basically, it's a social channel screenshot where there's suggestions, right? If you write cats, if you write any topic, you will get the latest post, which is about cats that is doing good on internet, right? Mm -hmm. So actually find content that people are talking about, which is the latest and actually you know, share that with your audience. So if you want to search for content, if you run out of content to share on social media, you can basically use many tools like this. This is one example of social channel. You can use other tools if you want, find content and curate content, and then just don't share the link, actually give your comments when you share the content. For example, if I want to share, if I had to share this, this story, right? Uh, saying, you know, 15 basic cat facts, I will not just share this. I'm going to go read the article and possibly find some crazy fact and then, you know, highlight that on my caption and say, you know what, this is a crazy fact. I learned from this and I think this is a good article and you share that up. So people actually get, you know, a, a trailer or a preview of what they'll find in the article because people are, people just hate 
you know, clickbaits and they're tired of, you know, people just, you know, posting stuff and not talking about it. So this will actually give them insights that you have actually read the concept, read the article yeah. and you're just sharing good stuff with them and not, you're not just sharing just for the sake of sharing. I see. So, so suggestion is one of the features people will find in social champ, right? That they will just like, write the yes. words in their niche yep. and you will give them how many? 100 uh, stories. Uh, yeah, it, it keeps on loading. Yeah, it's 100 stories. If you can, okay. you can scroll down, you can see more stories. And let's say, you know, you find a result. So th there's more good stuff in Social Champ is that, you know what, if you, if you love whatever search query is coming up, you can actually save that into RSS feed. So whenever you click into your collections over here, you actually see the results. You don't have to type and search again. Mm -hmm. Right? So actually, it's saved into your art collection. You can later come back and start loading up and you can see the latest content. That's perfect. Guys, if you'd like to know more about Social Champ, next week on Tuesday, we are uh, covering it in depth. There will be like Social Champ walkthrough of every feature. Uh, so September 17th, uh, we will give you a Social Champ uh, platform walkthrough. So make sure you will join. It's going to be live. You can ask questions. Awesome. So the next, uh, Twitter, businesses still use Twitter in 2019. Okay, <laughs> I've been emphasizing this a lot that do not, you know, go away from Twitter. People say tweets are dead. You can see this is 2019 stats where businesses are 93.7% on Facebook, but secondly, they are 84.4% on Twitter. Even if it's, even if new platforms are coming up like TikTok, you know, Instagrams, IGTV, right? Um, businesses think it's cooler to be there because youth is there. That's fine. But the legacy platforms like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, they are there. Businesses are there. They have to be there. And the, how you can leverage community is that when you, you can focus on hashtags, you can create a list on Twitter and actually find community people who are talking about the hashtag. You know, people talking about like for the the good yes. example is Me Too movement, right? That people who are talk doing that Me Too movement and you know talking about it. It's a great strategy to find people and bring them up into your community. Mm. Uh, Samir, we actually haven't covered like uh, the places where people can create communities, and I think uh, once we are on this slide, I think we can we can give a few examples to like let's say. Uh, top five platforms over there. So Facebook, yeah. uh, Facebook groups, right? That's that's like from top of my mind, like <laughs> the best place to create community. <laughs> exactly. Like I think uh, Facebook groups have evolved a lot, and Facebook itself is promoting Facebook groups a lot. Yes. So when your organic reach dies on Facebook timeline, Facebook pages are hit by organic reach. Facebook group is is a place where you can post content and appears to the users, you know, timeline. So you can, and you can create and leverage Facebook group and then power your other communities when you can make your Facebook group as the main central hub, right? So mm -hmm. if you have lists on Twitter, you can actually generate a list from your Facebook group and then, you know, you know, feed your Twitter list. Similarly, you can do YouTube, right? People have a good community on YouTube. If they want to do live videos, if they want to do, uh, you know, launch some videos it's a good place to have a lot of users but they can power youtube communities through their facebook groups you know like talk about you know you're going to create something video and i mean your ideas you know people will start giving them ideas once you launch that video on youtube share that on your facebook group you know we listen to your feedback and we create this video go watch it how do you think it is right mm -hmm. so uh you can create there and whatsapp slack those are like those could be the second favorite, you know, favorite places to have a community. But the limitation is the number of users that can join in a WhatsApp group, yes. in, a, in a Slack group, right? Uh, but again, it's very personal. Uh, most of the people do not want to give their contact number to be on WhatsApp. Uh, some people do not want to even give their email addresses to be on Slack. Mm -hmm. uh, top thing was Facebook group. Second, you can leverage WhatsApp and Slack to, you know, bring more users to your Facebook group, you know, like you can have a chain, like a main hub, like a strategy I told you, like it could be your main hub, your Facebook group, and these other platforms where you have, you know, scattered users, 
you can bring them in into your Facebook group. And this could be go same for you know Pinterest, Pinterest boards. You know, uh, uh, there could be Reddit, Hacker News, right? Uh, those could be your sources of users. But you will actually try to promote your Facebook group by bringing them in. I see. Uh, you know, I'm I'm a huge fan of Facebook groups, and Actually, last year, I had a meeting with Stephen Bartlett, who is like CEO and founder of one of the biggest social media agencies in the world, Social Chain. And he mentioned a few, uh, few ways how, how he would start a business like in 2019 and beyond. One of was LinkedIn, second was Voice. Uh, then there was something like TikTok and uh, one of them was Facebook groups. And Facebook is actually doing so many interesting things, uh, like experimenting you don't maybe even know about, but last year they were experimenting with uh, paid groups, like paid memberships, right? So, so they would allow group admins to charge uh, their members to join or access to, to some specific um, parts of the group. So that's what says all that Facebook is really promoting Facebook group usage. And I think Facebook pages will be going more and more in the background. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Uh, Facebook bringing monetizing groups because people used to create two different groups previously. You know, if I if I if you want my separate content, which is premium, you join my secret group, but you have to pay me some way to get into that group. Yes. So Facebook is trying to stop those two groups, and you know, have one group where people can pay you and you know, get access to hidden content, uh, you know, supporting Facebook groups. And I mean, yeah, and uh, there, there are even paid groups right now, but the transaction, transaction itself is not happening through Facebook. So Facebook just saw the opportunity there to just uh, charge some little fee from the, from the whole access, right? Because right now people pay through PayPal to be part of your community on Facebook. So, I mean, it's, it's a logical step. Yeah, it makes sense. Awesome. All right. Uh, Twitter, how we can create communities on Twitter around hashtags? Uh, yeah, hashtags and the list is the most recommended way that you, cre you, you have a list and you put people into that list. You know, on Twitter, you can have lists, mm -hmm. lists of people. So once you have that list, you can actually broadcast message and write message to all those people in the list. So list is one way to have, and you can separate, you can have different lists created on Twitter, you know, list for social media guys, list of influencers, list of other people. And they can, you know, interact with those guys and talk to them. But mm -hmm. usually people actually uh, follow hashtags, find people, target those people, engage with those people mm -hmm. and try to understand their motivations, um, find what they want to talk I about see. and uh -huh. you know, pull them into your group uh, or your hub. And really, really quickly, Instagram and LinkedIn. Instagram, again, like you can create communities like um, in DM groups, for example, or uh, in basically on your profile, because when you post something, same people usually will engage and they will start like networking under the comments. Is there like anything else on, on Instagram what you can do? Uh, to be honest, I just use for DMs and posting stuff. I mm -hmm. haven't created a community on Instagram, uh, but the community is derived to my Facebook page where you can add on Instagram, you can add a link, right? One a link on your bio, right? Yes. Uh, I drive traffic from there to my, the link that I'm trying to promote. Uh, but the groups on Instagram, a lot of teenagers do not want to have a lot of groups, right? On, on Instagram. They just want one-on-one -on -one conversation. They want to disappear, right? So I haven't seen a lot of groups on Instagram in DM messages, uh, I, some people try, I think some, well, someone tried to add me in a group where he's, I, maybe he was testing a group on Instagram and suddenly everybody started leaving, leaving, leaving. Some started, why did you create this? You know, everybody was freaked out and he himself freaked out. So he himself removed himself and we were all there like, why are we <laughs> <laughs> on the stranded island? <laughs> yeah, it was like, where are we? So we, everybody started leaving that. Uh, this, I think the same happened with, with, with a WhatsApp group, you know, somebody thought he wanted to broadcast a message and instead he created a group instead of a broadcast list. And he just added everybody and said, you know, buy this stuff. And everybody could see, every, and everyone could see everybody's number. And everybody's like, why? Oh my God. Mm, that's not good. You know, 
Yeah, it was just it, was, it created panic. But I mean, in, but, uh, Instagram Instagram is trying uh, to go into this direction because maybe you notice they added this sticker into stories that you can add, add a sticker which says join chat, right? And you just click join chat uh, and you as a, as a admin or as a, as a owner of the, of the Instagram account, you will see all the requests of people who clicked the join chat and you can just approve them and they will be automatically yeah. added into DM group. So I, I, think, I think it's quite interesting to just create a story. Hey, do you want to know something more about the new LinkedIn algorithm? Uh, click join chat here and let, let's discuss, right? Uh, yeah, I think yeah, that's a good way. To yeah, engage. That's great. yeah, that's a good idea. I tried that. I, I tried that, but I didn't think of a use case because a lot of followers were not social media influencers. They were young generation. Mm -hmm. uh, and when I created the group and saw people started requesting, um, I tried to accept and I could see that everybody got connected. Uh, some people don't like to be connected with some stranger on Instagram. Yes. You know, because, because the thing Instagram is private, right? Um, same goes with Snapchat. You know, you know, on Snapchat, you can create a group, but people don't like creating groups with individual people. But there are public groups on Snapchat that actually keep on pushing content. And mm -hmm. they're like, they just post content on lifestyle. So it depends how your, who your audience is, basically, who's following you, right? And, but that's a good style, you know, like, that's a good use case, actually. That you discuss, like let's talk about you know LinkedIn algorithm, or let's talk about you know companies or startups because mm -hmm. you know that's a good idea. We can test that out. Yeah, sure. Cool. Okay, and last LinkedIn uh, LinkedIn groups. Do you have any experience with LinkedIn groups? It goes up and down, you know. <laughs> like, exactly. I mean, I, I I don't have really like. <laughs> opinion on them I'm, I'm i'm in a few but not like engaging actively like on facebook like do you yeah have... exactly like yeah. Uh, like we created linkedin groups uh, we posted there before microsoft bought linkedin it didn't work out very well right then microsoft bought linkedin linkedin you know started doing good people started promoting groups we started posting on groups it, i don't know it just doesn't tick I don't know. Maybe we're not doing something right, or maybe yeah. it's not ready. Groups, we are not into the groups on LinkedIn. We exist, but we are more focused on the timeline. Yeah, really. I don't. I don't see any like influencers saying, "Hey, join my LinkedIn group" or something like this, because everybody's driving their <laughs> yeah, traffic. Yeah, exactly. Join my Facebook group or join my join my WhatsApp or anything, but not really LinkedIn groups, which is weird. Maybe they are okay. they are not just pursuing this uh, this idea. Yeah, I think so. You're right. All right. This was quite thorough <laughs> about yeah, the, this where, to create, where to create communities. All right. So, oh, yeah, but you know, I forgot it, you know, this Twitch, you know, like Twitch is oh, a yeah. great community of gamers. Yeah. You know? Like a lot of gamers are on Twitch and they have their own community over there. They play games, stream games. So that's a big community that I think will be missed out. It's a whole gamer community. Uh, exactly. Uh, that that was the last uh, last platform Stephen Bartlett said. He said Twitch. Go on Twitch. Go to esports. But the funny thing about Twitch is that they are not only only games only. Uh, like there are chat chat rooms or real life. So there are people cooking, right? So uh, uh, yeah. it's it's already becoming more like a social media for people who want to stream anything, not just the gaming and really like these uh, not gaming related uh, channels are quite on top. So maybe it's, it's a pivot that Twitch is, which is trying to like create. We'll see. Yeah. We'll see in the future what happens. Cool. All right. So when you build a community, uh, you know, a lot of this old school CEOs, they'll be like, you know, Oh, how much ROI will we get? How many sales are we doing in the group, right? When you, group, when you create a community, you need to think in terms of shares, not in terms of sales, you know? Uh, content to create, it, it could be entertaining, the content you create, it could be informing, it could be thought-provoking, right? But you have to understand, when you create a content, the question that you need to ask is, 
will I share this content if I read this somewhere else? Is this content so valuable that I share, yeah. I'll share it? Or I will risk sharing this content with my followers because I have a credibility, right? So I see. You create that content in terms of shares. So you need to understand that if your content is shared by a lot of people, you know, you're doing a good job. It doesn't have to be sales, you know. It doesn't have to be people paying your to buy your product. Community is for the sake of creating value. And, and if you create good value, people will share that stuff. So always think in terms of shares, you know. Is it shareable? The create content that I'm creating, is it shareable? Can people share it? You know, likes, comments are just, you know, one factor. You know, it's like, you know, likes and comments are like vanity metrics. You know, you share something, I like it, I comment, I comment on it. It's just like, I'm not risking my credibility. Okay. Mm -hmm. But if I share that content, I'm going to share it with my audience, which is your content, but my audience will judge that, you know what, Samir shared this content. This has to be a good content, you know? So I'm risking my credibility. So the question you need to ask, is your content that good that people will actually risk their credibility to share with your audience? You have to think that out. That makes total sense. I mean, um, attention is in the end, it all boils down to attention, like how, how many people you can attract and it will eventually translate into sales as well, even though the, the, the post is not like salesy or not pitching anything, but it's a, it's a brand awareness and it's bringing like traffic uh, towards your product or towards your personal brand, which eventually can really um, translate into, into leads or sales. So think about like, Think about this. It's really, really a good idea. Like, would I share it? Yeah. Good point. Yeah. Going to the next. Uh, all right. So memes were great. I don't know. Like people, brands all leverage memes. You know, they're like, you know, they find something and put some text on it and make it funny. People start sharing that. You know, <laughs> it's like a grow. It's like a growth hack. You can say uh, some. Brands are like, you know, too conservative, like, mm, should we do it? Should we not do it? It's too childish. You know what? Just experiment, you know, just see what happens. So it's a brand in, in the style. And the created the first, you can see the post. It's just the name, you know, it's just funny written, uh, something written over there called, you can't just cut people out of their life and pretend like you never knew them. And they shared me and the, with a knife, you know. Mm -hmm. Right, and you can see like you can see people are laughing. Sixty-eight comments, one forty shares. You know, like people are crazily shared on that. They mm -hmm. they can relate, right? They they feel you know this is funny. I relate to it. On the other hand, they just you know gave something about their product. You know, told you know it's a discount, fifty percent off. Talk something about that. Just one comment. Nobody shared. Thirteen likes. Nobody gives a damn what you sell. Yes. Right? So, so create content that people will love to share. Memes are a great way to start that up. You know, it's like a cherry, you know, on the cake, there are some cherries, you know, and sparkles. It could be something like that, but you can test that. People like it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> do, you have, do you have experience like uh, creating memes uh, in one of your companies? Uh, we created a meme. We, we created Donald Trump memes. <laughs> Uh, yeah, once again, like pardon me. We, we, we turn in memes uh, related to Donald Trump. You know, ah, okay. That, that's, a, that's, a, that's a risky territory. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it was good. Like, we didn't do any bashing or something. It was like, I think he did, he told on a tweet saying coffee fee, something like that. Oh, yeah, like, coffee fee. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> that was a very funny moment. Like, let's do it, you know. And we did create content on that. It was very good. Mm -hmm. It didn't really. Mm -hmm. uh, but it was fun, you know, like, you don't have to bash people, you know, to create memes. Like people always think that, you know, they have to make fun of somebody or they have to bash somebody um, to, in order to fall into the meme category. You just have to be humorous. You just ha have to not piss people and just find humor in that. You know, it's a great art to be humorous and not offending. Exactly. And I, I think like creating with, uh, cre coming up with topics for memes can be quite difficult but if you keep your mind open about the uh, funny things which are happening around you such as Kofefe, uh, you can always find a, like a bridge uh, to bring this same topic uh, to your brand 
So I think just, just look around, see what's happening. And I think like multiple times a month, you will find something in, uh, that you can, you can use in your content creation. Yeah, exactly. So uh, again, uh, when you add audience to your group, you need to understand who you're adding, right? What is the motivation? What motivates your audience in the community? Is it tricks or you know, tips on social media? Is it why are they joining your group? What's their job role? What jobs do you do? Are they founders? Are they startups? You know, where do they fall? What niche they are? What niche they do want to talk about? So it's all about knowing your audience who are in your community and then delivering the message according to that community. Yes. Know? That's something you have to do and understand their language, what language they speak, you know, do they understand French, you know, do they understand, mm -hmm. French, I mean, the, the, the words, you know, the technical terms, do they understand, is it a coding group, you know, like technical co-founders, do they understand technology words or is it like a college students who are just, who just went into college and they need help, you know, the, you have to really figure out the language that you will be using. Mm, yeah, and that, that's why I was mentioning that it's good to ask like open-ended questions to your to your target audience because they will really use the words uh, that you can be using in your content. So once again, ask your target audience, hey, what's your number one challenge with X, right? What's your number one challenge with lead generation? And people will start using, I don't know how to create list, right? So right now you know that your audience understands what list is right uh so so you can you can use this information to like curate the content and to to tailor make the content really for for the audience yep uh okay so again uh in a group when you create a group there's to, there has to be a human element and the thing is that just be genuine just be honest you know nobody is 100 percent perfect you know you can mess up in a group you can have fights, you know, you can just mess up, your company can mess up. Accept that, don't be an arrogant, you know, and reward those who got affected because of that, you know. Reward them, mention them something, you know, thank you for your feedback, thank you for finding a bug that was so critical, all thanks to Mr. You know, Edison, all, all thanks to Mr. Alex, you know. Thank you, Kiran, you know, you found a great bug, you know. Just mention them, reward them, and just be honest in, you know, whatever your company is going through. That is a key yes. factor mm -hmm. of it. Absolutely. Uh, and we are done with the webinar. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This was, this was good. This was pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, and I think there's a one last thing which we didn't mention. I honestly think that we, we should mention it in a start, which is like, who are the companies or personal brands? Like, who should be leveraging communities what do you think oh yeah that's a very good question um, whoever wants a family online you know I think uh, they should leverage it so if brands whoever needs alpha audience to be honest audience that will promote your content they will listen to you they need it so if, if, if I'm if somebody's an influencer you know they can create their own groups like Gary Vee has in his own fan following groups yes right? Stars, many stars have their groups, right? So that's a group where they become more human, you know, they get interaction, they understand what their audience is, wants to consume content. And that is something that they have to be on, they have to be on the group. Brands need to be there. It's 2019 brands, you really have to be creating a group so that you can actually be more human, you know, more human in, in, in this, in this, era that we are in brands need brands are beyond the logo brands are beyond the design you know they have to they need to have a community uh, around there and human touch over there so they, they all have to be on social media absolutely all right samir this was this was really insightful thanks a lot uh and for those of you who are still watching um i saw that a lot of you joined today which is amazing thank you for that uh, and you can join next week as well. The thing we are doing is called free seven day social media bootcamp where we cover a lot of uh, interesting topics. And today we covered how to uh, create communities around your brand or um, uh, about your, around your personal brand. And on Monday, 
uh, we are doing another webinar uh, and Udit will be joining us, CEO of Pitchground, and we'll be talking how to use Facebook Lives uh, to skyrocket your video views and conversions. So um, what we do at Pitchground is that we go live on Facebook and then we leverage Facebook ads to, to drive more views to this, uh, to this content. And then, of course, we can, uh, we can drive them into group and uh, transform them into, into full-blown pitch grounders. <laughs> and uh, that's what, what we'll discuss here on September 16th on Monday. Then on September 17th, uh, we, we will be talking only about social chain platform. So if you are considering purchasing um, lifetime deals of social champ, uh, you really need to join on Tuesday because uh, we'll be uh, we'll, we'll do a like really in-depth walkthrough and we'll tell you everything, how to get started, how to use Social Champ and so on. Uh, and we will also launch Social Champ so you'll be able to buy uh, the lifetime deal uh, on September 17th. And then there are two more webinars on Wednesday, how to create value-driven content and post consistently to increase sales because, well, consistency is one of the biggest problems uh, brands and uh, individuals have when it comes to uh, posting and then on um, on September 19th uh, how to scale social media and hit your first $10,000 so we'll be talking finally how to not only increase your brand awareness but how to translate this this awareness into sales as well so guys uh, if you're interested uh, make sure you will go to socialchamp.heysummit.com and uh, you will you will um, book your, your place here just by inserting your email address here and clicking book my place. You will receive uh, everything you need to know into email. All right, so thanks a lot, Samir. This was, this was really cool. Thanks a lot, everybody, for joining. So, Mia, uh, thank you as well. <laughs> nice to see you here. Samir, is there, is there anything you'd like to, you would like to say uh, to, to people who are still watching? Uh, awesome. No, I think we covered everything. The only thing that we need to understand is just give a human touch to your community. That's it. All right. That's a, that's a great way to, to wrap, the, wrap this up. <laughs> All right, Samir. Uh, thanks a lot and I will see you on Monday. All right, Jacob. All right. Take care. All right, Jacob. See you. Have a good Bye. day. Bye-bye. <laughs>